This is the Crespo Museum where the Harry Holt exhibit is at. Okay. Hello, I'm Suzanne Holt Peterson and I'm with the Cresswell Historical Society and today we're going to show people through the Harry and Bertha Holt exhibit and we're hoping that it'll be an interesting tour. Okay. This is the house Harry Holt was born in, in Neely, Nebraska. This is a color picture of it that my mother took uh, quite a long time later. And this is a picture of him when he was six months old. That's Harry? Yeah. Oh, my. And this is his parents with him in 1905. He was born in 1905. And down, let's see. Well, this picture here is of a Harry Holt when he was four years old. This one is of Bertha when she was three. And this is her in her nurse's training uniform in 1925. And we have one of her nurse's caps here in the exhibit, and we can show that later. Picture here is of Bertha's parents on their wedding day in 1895. And this picture over here is Harry's parents on their wedding day in 1904. Just, let me yeah. get a better... Yeah, okay. I'm See, that's your grandma room. and grandpa too, Dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> your grandma and grandpa hold. Is that man is who? He's my great-grandfather. He's Bertha's grandfather oh, on okay. her mother's side. See, it's... Okay. He's... Oh, Sherman. Yeah. Okay, and that's yeah. his family over there? Is well, it? this is his wedding picture. Okay. He was probably married in the Civil War, like my other great-grandfather, the, the whole great-grandfather. Harry and Grace, that's his sister that was three years younger, with their horse. He drove to town. This is after they moved to South Dakota. He drove to town several miles to buy groceries when he was nine years old. Tell me when. Go ahead. Okay. They moved to South Dakota in 1910 when my father was five years old, and they moved into where there was Indian lands. Now, that's your mother? Yeah, this is... 1923? Let's see. Bertha Holt in 1923. That's her, her diploma, or her nurse's... No, not her nurse's cap, that's her graduation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is Harry and his sister Grace in 1910. Now, she's a little older, isn't she, or no, younger? No, he, he, he was five and she was three at that picture. Oh, okay. This is Bertha in 1910 when she was six years old with her grandfather, Holt. And this picture here is several years later when my father was going to school in Firesteel, South Dakota, and that's him. And we aren't exactly sure whether he was 12 years old or somewhere in that range. He only went to school for two years, but he had learned to read before then and he was advanced. Picture here, that's Bertha when she was about 17 and many of her siblings and some of her neighbors, she was the straw boss, I guess you would call it, of these group that were going to work in her parents' vegetable garden. They had 35 acres of, of vegetables that they grew and sold to people. This older couple here were my great grandparents. My, my parents were first cousins. This is my mother when she was 10 and my father when he was 9. Now, where's your mother? Right there. That one? Yeah. And, okay, and that's your father? Right there. Okay. And this was their grandparents' Holt, their Holt grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. So the whole family came, all the children and grandchildren. And this is my father's parents. This is Aunt Bernice and this is Aunt Flora. And they had other children. This is my mother's parents. 
and that baby is Aunt Buva, my aunt. And these two babies were about 10 days apart. And the whole, these, this couple had five sons that grew up and got married, and one daughter that never married, and she became a nurse and took care of her mother for many, many years, because she had heart trouble. This is their wedding picture, and they got married in Denver, Colorado in 1927, December 31st. And the wedding dress is green, and they went to Denver because that was one state where it was legal for, parent, for cousins to get married. This is, this is their first house, and... It was a cook shack, you yeah, say, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And some other people lived in it later, but, and he had farm equipment. He farmed for other people and had his own truck with uh, grain. He had his own little wheat mill, you said. Yeah. Right, okay, and then that's his truck right there full of yeah. sacks of wheat or something. Yes, full of flour. flour. Okay. And that looks like an interesting picture, using the truck to tie the horse line to. Clothes line, <laughs> yeah. Ready? They started having children after waiting several years, and by the time they left South Dakota, they had four children. The oldest one wasn't quite four, and the new one was just a tiny baby when Let's they see. moved to Oregon. Now, that's their house in South Dakota there. Yes, that's right. In 1926. Oh, he built it then. I'm not sure if he built it then, but he might have started it then. Okay. But it, this is kind of an interesting part here, too. Okay. What, in order to earn enough money to go to, or to move his family to Oregon, he became a coal miner because there had been such a drought in South Dakota, there hadn't been any rain for three years to speak of, and so his custom farming for other people had just not materialized. So he, he found out that there was a six-foot vein of coal six feet below the surface, so he dug down and became a coal miner and got enough money to move his family to Oregon. Now this is the grasshoppers on a post there in South Dakota. Gives you a good idea why it's a good place to move away from. <laughs> there was a bunch of them. When it was a baby, they went, at least mom, went to uh, Neely, Nebraska to see her grandfather Holt, and that's baby Stewart. By that time, uh, Grandma Holt had died. And this is Bertha with Stewart, Wanda, Molly, and Barbara came along a little when Molly was about 15 months old. On that same trip, when they took Stuart to see gra his grandfather Holt, they also went to Iowa, and this is, this is the four-generation picture. This is Stuart and his mother, and Bertha's mother, and Bertha's grandma, Sherman. She lived to be 93 years old. This is Harry's, uh, Bertha and Harry's uh, grandpa, or their, his this father. This is father's, daddy's father. father. And that's the old 1937 Buick that they came to Oregon in, back in... 1937. Oh, it was a new one, 1937. Oh, well, maybe the Buick wasn't, but that's when they came to Oregon. Yes. Okay, and there's a log And truck. then he started a logging business, or a lumber business. In he, Oregon here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And here's some of his... Uh, a few pictures of the lumber mill. Yes. And this is the house that they lived in. In Presswell. Yeah, in the first Presswell. one. And they, this is the four children. And then I came along. I'm number five. And this is a picture of Wanda holding me, looking into a mirror. There's our faces oh. reflected. My mother liked different angles of pictures. She... She loved pictures. These are her pictures. Now that's when you're a little older there. Well, I wasn't born yet. Oh, you weren't yeah, born yet. These are the first four. It, oh, I was okay. six years in. Okay. okay. I see. That's the first four. Yes, yeah. that's the first four children. And that's some more of the and lumber more mill. More of the lumber mill. Here is of the two big oak trees and the house that they 
have then was their smaller house, which we'll tell more about the bigger house coming later. But this was, they were playing in the hammock and just having a picnic or something. Okay. And this is the boat they took a trip to Alaska in? Yes, this was the Norma just J. A little one. It was 55 feet long, and they, en they went in 1946 when Linda was just a tiny baby. Mm. And this is some of the unusual, that's a, about a 20-legged starfish. Wow. And this is a picture of their cabin that they had built in 1942 at Hasita Beach. We had many happy memories of that cabin. It's been torn down now, but it was fun. Okay, this picture is our big boat, the Wanda Bell, named after my oldest sister. And that was an 84-foot old boat. It was built in 1910, but it was a special boat to us. And they took lots of the mill workers out on trips and had lots of fishing. It could put down these two big posts two tall masts, one on each side, and attach fishing lines to it. It was called oh. a trawler. And that's probably Molly and Barbara. They were good Caught at fishing. Pretty big fish. Yeah, 36 pound salmons wow. once in a while. When Linda was born, before she was born, we were living in this three bedroom house. And then they said, if, it's a, if the new baby is a girl, we'll have to build another house not knowing what God had planned ahead. And if it was a boy, it could stay in Stuart's bedroom. Well, Linda was born, and they started building this great big poured cement house with six bedrooms and three bathrooms and a very large living room and game room. It was poured cement okay. so that the men could, um, the men from the mill helped build it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'd see. Uh, on April, oh no, February 28, 1950, my father had a severe heart attack looking at some timber. And it, if you want to find out the real story about that, you need to see the video, the Harry Holt story, done by my cousin Dan, who's doing this video for me. Um, he was in bed for about six months. And he finally got stronger, and finally he got so he could walk outside with Linda. But during that time, the spiritual renewal or rededication or strength that came from God came upon him, and he really consecrated himself to God. And it, the, it says down here, he read the Bible eagerly, many hours daily. And that was after he got strong enough. But he almost died when he had his heart attack. Well, when he had this heart attack, he prayed very much that God would help him to live. And he became a Christian at that time or else completely dedicated himself to God. He, I don't know which it was, but he was, became very faithful to the Lord. And for, uh, during that time of recuperation and even afterwards, for a long time, uh, slowly gaining strength he then they begin he and my mother they both were committed to the lord during that time well during the time of his recuperation for several years he went to a, our family went to alaska in 1952 and enjoyed that very much then they begin my parents began praying that god would show them something that they could do and for over a year, they had a child evangelism class at their home, and children came to know the Lord during that time, and they still felt like that there was something that God wanted them to do. And then in December of 1954, which we have a little thing up right up here, they saw a documentary at South Eugene High School. Dr. Bob Pierce came, that was their director of World Vision at that time, and he showed films and it showed the orphans in Korea. This was right after the Korean War. And the children were so desperate there and so many war orphans. And then they showed pictures of these Amerasian mixed race children from the UN soldiers and the Korean mothers. And that just affected my parents. They saw that and they 
went home and they uh, started sponsoring children, but they still felt like there was something more. And they, each of them separately, wanted to adopt children of those mixed race children, but they were kind of afraid to tell each other. After all, if you were 50 and 51 years old, you wouldn't exactly know how to approach your husband and say, well, I want you to go over to Korea and adopt eight children for me. Or if you were the husband, you wouldn't want to say, well, I want to go over there and get this whole bunch of children and bring them home for you. How would you feel about it? So finally then, uh, in my mother's book, it tells about it and how he finally approached her and she encouraged him. And they started, he started describing the house and it was exactly the same way she had remembered looking around the house herself. She said the kitchen was big enough to feed an army and the dining room, they could turn the table so it would go into the library. And she said each bedroom could hold a cot and Suzanne and Linda's bedroom could hold a hold on the double bed. And there was a, ga a beam in the game room ceiling and she said he described it the same way she had seen it. And she used to tell these in uh, Christian Women's Club, tell of the experience of how that happened. That they, and then he asked, well, how many do you want? And she said, she was afraid to say, oh, eight, because she knew that that's what it was, but she was afraid to say it. So she said, well, maybe six. And then he said, oh, eight or 10 or more. And then they knew that God himself had encouraged them to do that. And so then they started ahead to go, and he went, got ready. He found out how to go over to Korea and start doing that, and he went over to Korea. And on the way in Japan, he began to have jet lag, and he woke up in the middle of the night, and he, he was beginning to wonder, is this something that I'm doing myself, or is it from God? And he just, and he didn't know if he should go to, uh, just stay around Seoul or go farther south in Korea to look for children and he didn't know and he reached out and took the Bible and it was three o'clock in the morning and he reached out and he opened the Bible, flipped the Bible open and put his finger down and turned the light on and these verses came out at him, fear not for I am with thee, I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west, I will say to the north, give up and to the south keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. And it answered all the questions that he needed. And he just, he was so astounded and thrilled and he wrote this letter to our family and this is a copy of it and it just, and then so he started, he went to the south part of South Korea and he got several of my siblings there. And then he, mom began to try and find out how to adopt the eight children. And then the, at that time, the agencies, the child had to match the parents. These were never going to match us uh, physically or anything. And so they sent out a man to come and investigate and my parents were 50 and 51 years old. They already had six children and the people were not in favor of them getting them. And there was a law that they could only get two. And so they had to have a special act of Congress and, and they were not in favor of them getting them. And so they wrote that back. And this is a copy of that letter and then, but they did say that they had the means to adopt, but they said, don't, don't let them have them. But it's down here, Lisa, that made our exhibit, said there were some doubts about the Holtz decision. But I told her to write, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 31. I don't, I'm sure that my parents thought that because then they went on to try and start the adoption and over here, there was letters that they wrote, and the congressman had to write, and, and then he said, well, you've got to get letters of recommendation, and my mother, I remember, she went out, and she got 80 some of them in about two days, people saying that they were good citizens, and that they were raising their children well, and that they had enough money to adopt these children, and so that was, and then they started, these are some of my siblings, and on this side, there's some, some of them, are, one is my sibling, 
and some of the children, there was one baby that died, and two others were not well enough to come, and my father got other children to replace those. But he kind of wondered what was going to happen to those other children. So when they came to America, the, my father brought some children for some other people too. Then when they came, there was this picture of them getting off the plane. Where, uh, Bob Pierce and somebody else from World Vision were there. And my father, uh, he didn't know what was going to happen, but he knew that there was going to be big publicity because that was happening in Korea already and we'd already had some publicity about us. Anyway, this picture went around the world, I think, of these 12 children coming off, uh, eight for our family and four for other families. And the, the newspaper was so big with it, and I don't know if it was radio or TV, but people started phoning in and writing, and they said, you got eight, can't we get one or two? And there were people coming by to see us, to see what they looked like and everything. And, then they went back and looked at those Bible verses again, and my mother said, the part that says, I will bring your seed from the east, that's a promise. But the part that says, bring my sons from afar, that's a command. So then they started the adoption program. It just shows that they were, there was lots of publicity. And this is an interesting thing. My mother made this birth announcement. It folds up so that there's just the stork and the, the airplane stomach and the diaper. And then you pull it down and whoops, eight diapers, eight children. So that was kind of interesting. And we have a chair from our dining room table in here. And here's a picture that shows it at one of our meals. This is when the table was turned so that it would go into the library. Mm -hmm. And there are just some other pictures here. Here's Stuart with his four brothers. See, I'll move oh, this that's chair. okay. Stuart was always disappointed every time there was another girl born <laughs> in the family. So he finally got four brothers and four more sisters. And, and this is a nice picture, too, of it. Okay. It shows the whole family up on the, on the back steps. Oh, yeah. Betty was just a baby. And there were some that were three, and some that were two, and some that were one and a half. And scenes from the orphanage. And this is a charter plane coming to America with baby, babies in baskets and toddlers. And just pictures of the orphanage. There's Molly with a child. Molly went to Korea when she was 20 years old and has been there most of the rest of her life. She comes back and goes to school once in a while. This is a picture of mom with the Korean thing that holds the baby on the back. That was in 1956. And I, this is the orphanage office, I think. And you can see that there was lots of publicity at many different times. This paper clipping, okay. This is in 1958 when it showed the, the second orphanage being built. And I was there and they made it sound in the newspaper like I was building the orphanage, <laughs> but that wasn't true. And these are some of the New Year, from the some of the newsletters that they would send out uh, from the Holt office. And this is, this orphanage, this was what it looked like uh, a year or two later. And then that got too crowded and he, Daddy looked for another piece of ground and he found a piece of ground on a hill in, in Ilsan, which was north of Seoul. And for two months, uh, well, for, in 1961 to 1963, Linda and the eight adopted children and mom and daddy all lived in Korea together. But there are times we're so busy with the orphanage that it, this is the time that they had for two months 
They lived in a tent with a thatched roof. It was winter, and Linda said that that was the most family time they had of their time together there. My father began to get awards and things, and this is what the orphanage in Ilsan looks like now. It's a hillside with great big gymnasiums, and all the buildings are handicapped accessible now because it's a center for 300 severely disabled that didn't get adopted. Well, when Daddy died, of course, there was lots more publicity, and Mom went over to Korea, and uh, they picked out a place for Daddy's grave, and then this is how they carried his uh, casket. It was made out of Philippine mahogany, which, of course, is close by Korea, didn't cost so much, but they made it uh, on a thing that they could carry up a steep mountain slope with many, many people carrying. And they, they carried his casket up there and oh, there was so many children thinking that that was the end of them because they thought that the work wouldn't go on and my mother was there and she said, if this is God's work, this is God's work, he started it, he'll let us know when to stop. So they kept on with the work. This picture here is of our family in a, in a church in Eugene, uh, a memorial service for my father. This quilt was given to mom as, from a group in Iowa that uh, it's an adopted family group. I think it was a picnic or something and shows the hands of the children and a lot of times there's names on them. On the back of it there's a, a placket that sticks down and if somebody has put the Bible verses that guided mom and daddy on the, on the quilt who gave it to them and stuff. Well, this is on the back. Thank you, Grandmother Holt. says it's from the Des Moines High School? Yes, East Des Moines High School is where Mom went to high school. And uh, this was given to her in recognition for her work. Um, I don't know, I think it was probably in the 1990s when she received this. Now these are just a few family pictures? Yes, this was taken um, before the adopted children came. Some of them were the first four children, and then there's some of me, and there's a couple of family pictures. This one's 1951 and 1953. Molly lives in the house where Daddy died in Korea, and like I said, the orphanage is now an institution for handicapped children, and this is one of the children that was in the orphanage. And this is taken inside of Molly's house. And there's Mom. And this shows that the city park in Cresswell is named Harry Holt Park. And this is some of my siblings and myself taken when they put up the nice sign saying Harry Holt Memorial Park in the city park in Criswell, which is just across the street from the museum. Okay, there's one of your mom jogging. You, didn't she jog about a mile every day? Yes, she did, and they even, she even got an award for, she broke the world's record for the 400 meters. She had to train for that, but there was nobody else that had a, rec, uh, had a 400 meters from the 90 to 94 year old class, so when she was 92, she broke the world's record, or set the world's record. Oh and this is a picture of her with one of her grandchildren. He now has two children of his own. Mm. That's okay. Joshua. Oh, Josh. And yeah. this is, uh, shows her bringing a baby to America. They put the baby on her back. But, so. Okay. Let's see. And this, this picture is of her 95th birthday party that they had in the Cresswell at the Emerald Valley, and this is a picture of mom in front of our family picture that was taken in 1955. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, her neck was hurting, so she had a brace on. Okay. Ready? Yeah. When mom was sick the last, I mean, 
at the last of her life. She still wanted to get out and work in the flower beds, even though she was having oxygen all the time. And this take, was taken about two or three weeks before she died. And she cleaned all of her flower beds before she died. Hmm. And this is an article about after she'd had her stroke, while she was still alive, there was quite a bit of publicity because they knew that she might be dying. After mom's funeral in Eugene, Oregon, she wanted to have balloons released. She had seen that before, and when the whole office was planning her funeral two or three years before she died, uh, she, they were discussing things with her, and she said, oh, I want to have balloons, and Mr. Williams said they should be red and yellow, black and white, just like in the song about Jesus loves the little children. So that's what they did, and the balloons were very pretty going up in the sky. Then, let's see, then are you ready to do this yeah. down here? Then after she died, after the funeral here, a few days later, the, several of the family went over to Korea with her body, uh, and they had a very extensive funeral over there, and even the First Lady of Korea came to her funeral. In Korea, white is the symbol of mourning, and so all the flowers were white, like uh, chrysanthemums, but they were all white. The day after her funeral and graveside service, my siblings and in-laws and nephew were going to go back to America, so they had their regular, more comfortable clothes on. This is Daddy's grave and his marker, and this is Mom's brand new grave, and this is my four adopted sisters and Betty's husband, and my sister Barbara, who's my natural sister, and her son, and my brother Robert, uh, adopted brother, and his wife. And then they were all relaxed and wearing more comfortable clothing, and they were going to go home that next, same day. And then this is a later picture taken of Mom's uh, headstone and Daddy's headstone. It has her statistics there and written in English and Korean. And one side has English as some verses from Proverbs 31 of the virtuous woman, and, and the other side is written in Korean. It's kind of a three-cornered, uh, like a U-shaped thing. These are the first book your, your mom did yes. in English and Korean and in Danish, you yes. say, right? Yeah. Okay. The, this is her nurse's cap, and it has her name on it, just like this handkerchief does. It says Bertha Marion Holt. Then we also have some dolls that she had uh, at her house. Very Korean? Uh, the Korean dolls are in that other case, I'll oh, show you. Okay. But these are, uh, I think these are from Russia, and then we have from India. and We also have the last purse that she had. Uh, okay. Tell me. Yeah, these pictures here are of the family members that died before she did. This little baby died in Korea, and mom never had seen her. And this is Wanda and daddy, and Matt who, died, who drowned when he was 18, and Joe died when he was 32, and Stuart died when he was 58 of a stroke or heart attack. Now those she kept in her bedroom, right? Yes, that's right. She had them hanging on the wall. Several of her passports, it's not all of them, but there's, it shows the different phases in her life. Okay, these are passports just to Korea or other places uh, too? Well, it's an American passport and of course it shows her pictures, but she traveled other places, but they, they put a stamp in each, one, uh, each page that shows a different country or wherever you traveled. Okay. This one down here is quite interesting because it's of, the, of six of the adopted children that they came on one passport. This was when they came back after being in Korea for two years. Because uh, Joe and Bob came back with Daddy, so uh, these came with Mom. It was given to Mom in 1999 by a school, and I suppose it was a fundraiser, and it says Living Biographies, and it shows different public features public people, and one of them is Bertha Holt, and shows a picture of mom there with her hairdo. Okay. Now this is uh, 
this some is pictures a book of your mom was, when she was jogging. Yes. This book was written for her 95th birthday, and the Holt office, I think, still has some of those. And part of this was when she did the 400 meters and got her... Uh, Got, the set the world record, and then she got given this Golden Shoe Award by the Runner's Magazine. Oh, that so, shoe there. Yeah. Wow, that's fancy. And um, these are just some of the plaques and things, awards that she got at different places. And this one down here is uh, Oregon Association of American Mothers. 1994 Humanitarian Award, Bertha Holt. And uh, they would, because she was American Mother as well as uh, Oregon Mother of the Year uh, in, 19, in 1966, then later on they made this, uh, had the Bertha Holt Award, and they gave that to younger women hmm. that were doing very well for their families. Couple of keys to the city, yes. Jackson, Mississippi, and I think the other one Portland, Portland, Oregon. Yes. Yeah, they had some from Korea. The one that was gold and it got stolen. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> These are Korean dolls, are they? Well, this one here in the kind of blue-green dress is, and I think the other one is China, and then these are from India, and this shows one of Mom's books. Oh, it's got but, a different cover. Yeah. yeah. And that's Daddy with the adopted children in Korea. And this is when he came to a, back to America with my siblings. That's mm -hmm. over in Korea. And this is our family in 1953. Linda's the little one in the middle on the, on the floor. And I'm the one on that end on the floor. And it, this is two years later when we had the adopted children. Here's a couple more dolls and things. I think those are from India. Oh, this one's from Vietnam and that one's from India. And this plate here shows the adopted children when they were close to teenagers. And they Holt used to sell those, but I'm sure they're out of those now. Now, can, okay. you, can you do these down here with this? Let's see. Boy, that's a long picture. This picture here is when mom became American mother, and there's an arrow there that points out to her. And that tag is from her, when they would do the parade of mothers. And this, this picture over here was when she came home after being American mother. And this glass thing has a candle in it that then when in the future, in the, pe in the years after she was American mother, when they would have the convention, the past mothers would go have a parade of women, and they were wearing their sashes, and they would carry a lighted candle. And it was probably quite picturesque. So uh, she read the parade for a long time because she, was, she lived for 34 years after, the, after she was American mother, but the last several years she didn't go to the ceremony. This Bible was given to her for being Oregon Mother of the Year, and um, it was given to her by the American Bible Society. They also, then when she became American Mother, they presented her with a nice one that had a uh, nice Bible that had uh, large print, but I think some family member has that because we didn't find it for the exhibit. And these are just more pictures of when she was American Mother. Or Oregon mother. Okay. okay. These two dresses are Korean traditional hanbok, the Korean dresses. This one is the more um, regular type, and this is the more. My mother loved pink, and when she was young, redheads could not wear pink, but when she got old and had white hair, she loved pink, so she wore it a lot. And these were all given to her, these beautiful. Dresses. Some of them are silk, and they're just gorgeous. She had many, mm -hmm. and she would wear them to picnics and things. And then this is her wedding dress that she made herself. And it's 1927, so it's a flapper girl style. She said she made it a tiny bit longer than the style because she didn't want her children laughing at her for wearing such a short dress. But she made it be a party dress so she could wear it more than once. 
And we even have a picture of her sister Beulah wearing it for her high school graduation. And this is mom's dress that she made for the Oregon Centennial, which was 1959. And she, at that time, she had a hoop skirt that had belonged to her grandmother or great-grandmother, and she wore it, but she wore it out. <laughs> this is mom's desk, and we didn't have everything that she really had on her desk, but she did love to do scrapbooks, and so we have items that she did for her, um, for her picture albums. These were the pages, and these were the covers, and she had a whole box of different types of things, corners and everything, and the shoelaces she used for this, put them through there. And this is her letter opener and pens and different pictures and things. And she just loved to do this thing. And this was for telephone messages. I believe one of my brothers did that, made this. And then for Christmas time, she would get many, many Christmas letters and cards from people, and so she would send out a New Year's greeting. And this is the one from 1999, and in here she said, I'm anticipating the shout which will announce the Lord's coming or his personal invitation. And then she thanked people and told where she'd been and all the different things she'd done. And she would send out 600 of these. Sometimes we helped her. Thank you so much, Dan, for doing this fabulous tour, and I hope that everybody that sees it can at least get a, a small smattering of what it is. And I really enjoyed that, that they put in about the difficulties that my parents went through. One lady that writes for the newspaper said she could see that they were people of determination and vision, and I don't know if she thought faith, but I know that it was faith. Thank you so much for for enjoying the video. Lord bless you, Dan. Thank you.